Welcome to the Saints Martini, a cocktails and conversation podcast with your hosts, the Saint and the Halo, Warren and Irish. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good middle of the night, whenever it is you happen to be listening. Welcome to another podcast of the Saints Martini Cocktails with Conversation with myself, the Saint Warren, and of course, Halo, I was going to say Halo the Irish, Irish the Halo. Well, hello, (laughs) hello to you (laughs) too. How are you today? I'm so sorry. Um, Don't be (laughs) Look, I'm already drinking, so <laughs> hold on to your butts, as they say. So, um, so, so <laughs> yes, how are you going, <clears throat> Halo the Irish? Well, it, it, it sounds like a character from some medieval drama, Halo the Irish. It could, yeah, it could be. Yeah. Don't get me started with that. I'm going to start thinking about characters. Yeah. You know, I just want to say, if it's, I'm having a hard time talking right now because I just want to say I just tried a candy for the first time. And it was the most awful thing I have ever tasted in my entire life. And I, I, I had put it in my mouth while you were doing the intro. <laughs> and now I am not sure how I'm going to continue. Let me tell you what this is. I have never seen this before. And I saw it at a store today when I was there. And I thought, what the hell is this? I have to buy it. It was, it's called Chase's Cherry Mash. And it says that it's made in St. Joseph, Missouri. Mm-hmm. Um since like they've been making it since like 1918 or something okay that's what they say i think that this was made that year this thing that i just said it's excuse me and i'm sorry if i'm insulting any cherry mash fans (laughs) oh there's so many out there it's like the taylor swift community of lollies you know um (laughs) You know, well, don't, don't insult the uh, the you know. It, otherwise, the manufacturers will write a song about you. They might, and yes. they'd be right to write one about this. I might write a song about this. This is horrific. Um, this is a big ball that's not shaped like it like smoothly. A very very thick chocolate with pieces of what I think may be peanuts in the chocolate, but inside of it, once you crack into it, there is a pink paste that tastes like cherry cough syrup and right. like robitus and i don't know if you had that brand in australia uh, I, but I, I i know what you, you mean by that cherry. You know, yeah. it's just like or also maybe kind of tastes like like mad dog 2020 if you guys have ever tried that no. I, mean, I know that if you went to college in the town i went to several people have tried that um, so yeah, I don't know what the hell this is, but it is a, an abomination in candy form. And I just had to get that off my chest before I throw it in the garbage because <laughs> there you go. not an endorsement. And I do not recommend <laughs> Okay, <laughs> zero stars. <laughs> oh well, God. As, like, as... Why would anybody think like, Cough syrup flavor of anything would be good for candy. I don't know. Okay, I'm finished. <laughs> well, it's like, well, it's like eucalyptus drops. Everyone loves eucalyptus drops. I do not understand why you want to eat something that tastes and smells like furniture polish. I don't. I don't understand it. Oh. Okay. Well, it, I don't. I don't equate it with furniture polish, but um, I don't like them. Um, I thought you were going to say that it that they tasted and smelled like a koala's butt that's because you know because well, they, they, they eat eucalyptus leaves, because, they eat eucalyptus leaves <laughs> because that's how immature i am after drinking a margarita um yeah that's what I, i've had one and i'm halfway through another one so <laughs> well oh so you're drinking uh margaritas i am well i'm just I'm... on the rocks well, I am drinking my great nemesis in the world, red wine, because we all know what happened one time on air when I drank red wine. Um, I destroyed a computer. And, yes, um, you- yeah, so I'm having a Penfolds Kunanga Hill Cabernet Sauvignon uh, from 2018. And it is so high class, so high class. 
it doesn't even have a region. It's just labelled as South Australian. Oh, no. <laughs> so, a region yes. that's why. I know. How dare you? <laughs> um, so I, I actually read from it. So, so, I thought you were going to say it came with like a twist-off cap or something. <laughs> well, it does. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, okay. Uh, and here well, there's a cork shortage. Sometimes that has to happen. <laughs> well, that's, that's pretty, well, actually, twist, twist caps are now pretty common, actually, because, um, yeah. because apparently most wine is drunk within 12 months. So, in a sense, there's actually <laughs> no reason to, especially in my house. Uh, especially during the pandemic. 12 hours, yeah. <laughs> um, there's actually no real need to have a cork. You only need a cork if you want to age wine. So, if you're not going to age your wine, there's absolutely no reason to have a cork. And, of course, if you don't have a cork, you don't get corked wine, which, of course, means wine that goes off, for anyone who doesn't know what that term means. Um, but, anyway, um, here we go. Oh, I should President read from Small, the bottle. Yay. Here we go. Uh, so all the hallmarks of pure Cabernet Sauvignon with a classic spice and savoury note supported by well-handled oak and supple tannins. Oh, Kunungi Hill me. wines are known for their generosity of flavour, balance and lasting quality. But it doesn't have a fucking region. So how great a quality is it? Um, it's just every bit of loose grape they've collected from the state of South Australia and put right. into a mash. So, You're talking um, to a lady who recently bought discount boxed wine <laughs> from the grocery store. Don't worry, I've okay, had remember we discussed wine. this when I read yeah. Peak Wine Mom. Okay, I've had I I have drunk boxed wine or Cardinet as we call it in Australia, um, <laughs> Chateau Cardboard Cardinet. Um, and of course, I don't know if you realize Australia actually invented those boxes. Well, look, ecolo- you know, like ecologically wise, is, that's right. Um, <laughs> my, my <laughs> lips are not connected to my tongue and my mouth at this point, I think. Um, and nothing's getting from my brain actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, wait, what was, see, now I've forgotten. Or drinking, drinking what, the, we... the Chateau cardboard. Oh, yeah, I've tasted it. It's not great. No, no, it, no. it's not. In, in fact, I don't think um, that's what I was going to say, but we're just going to go with that. Okay. <laughs> it is the seafood extender of the wine world. Um, it is, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, but of course, the other thing too is if you take it out of the cardboard box and you have it just in the bladder, in Australia, that's called a that dune really bag. Fun. Well, and, in Scotland, that's called a haggis. No, yes. okay. So, <laughs> but, but but here's the game. Here's the game they play at barbecues, right? So they've got what they call a hill's None hoist. None of what I said is true. <laughs> a, a, hill's, a hill's hoist, all right? Which is like a, you know, a washing line, which um, there, this is the Australian type of washing line. But I think you have them around the world now where it's a centre pole and it, it, it the, the washing goes around in a circle. So it's like yes, you can I spin it. Yes, I have seen that. Yes. Yeah, I know, because I, I don't really, because apparently they are, they're actually called a hills hoist, not a washing, oh. anyway, long story. Um, so what they do in Australia is they pin one bag to the corner, each corner of the thing, and then they spin dune bag roulette, where you spin it and you stand underneath the washing line, and whoever it's, it lands on top of has to take a drink. Okay. Yes. Sounds like a fun game classy people <laughs> classy people northern australians you know hey queensland <laughs> queensland was built on this sort of culture <laughs> and <laughs> i never said my country was classy because it's not it's really not <laughs> have you seen america okay uh, well <laughs> yeah okay I mean, yeah. <laughs> come on man let's Let's not be silly here. Well, I mean, that's going to happen anyway. But um, let's be honest. We've got really some some choice low class in our country. <laughs> One well, of them was just president. Was president. So, I see. Yeah. I see. I, I don't really want to talk about him. But I, I, I did see that he he still, his fans, like the Republican Party, still seem to believe that he's going to make a comeback in 2024. Um, I'm almost in some ways hoping that he does and he loses us again, you know? I I hope that he rots in jail. (laughs) That's what I like. I really just. Because Giuliani's house was raided. Oh, I heard about this. Yes. Yes. 
And then, then he tried to say that they've come, they, they were coming to look for Hunt. They were really investigating Hunter Biden because when they <laughs> took all of his laptops and his phones and everything, he said, what, well, don't you want those hard drives there? Supposedly, this is him telling the story, I think, to Sean Hannity. Oh, um, right, okay, you know, yes. and they said, what's on those hard drives? And he said, it's, those are Hunter Biden's hard drives. And they said, no, we which don't want Which he's never those. released. <laughs> which he's never fucking actually released. <laughs> which is, you know. Fucking Hunter Biden, like, Shut the fuck up. Like, Ooh, seriously. What, what is, just, what is I'm this? I'm so tired of the oh, ridiculousness of these people, you know? And I just would really just like to stop having to hear about them except to hear that they're going to prison. That's because they deserve prison. They are major criminals. And um, if we don't punish these people for what they did while they were in office and so. Oh, we just got a little bit of a black, uh, hang on. I think we've lost the audio for a second. Yep, we'll be right back. We're back. Sorry about that. We just had a little bit of an audio hiccup there. So uh, the Australian NBN. Oh, you got to love it. Don't you you got to love it. <laughs> The camel of internet <laughs> service providers. Well, what do they say? You know, sort of the camel, the um, uh, the animal made by committee, and uh, yeah, the Australian internet service. What happens when I politicians? Thought that was a platypus. Yes, yeah, what it is. Yes, <laughs> but the Australian NBN like... Nas- National Broadband Broadband Network. What happens when politicians decide they know more than technicians? And you end up with the shittiest internet in the world. But anyway. Well, wow. I our, our politicians like to do that about healthcare here. Oh, at least ours won't fuck with that, which is good. Which is, thank God. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather them fuck with the internet than healthcare. You know what I mean? So, you know what I would do? Maybe yeah. some of them would not be, you know, available, like, get internet then. See, I cannot speak. I English very good today. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm the same. I need to keep drinking water because my... Oh my god! I, yeah, I know. I, I know exactly what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying. But anyway, I do. So what? What is? What is the uh, the Sam L. Jackson line? What is it? You know? Yes, I hope they. What is it? Yes, I hope they rot in hell or something. Yeah, I hope they. He said, "Yeah, die. yes, I killed them, and I hope they burn in hell." Oh, that's it. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, I um, remember that movie. Yes, that traumatized me. That movie. Because of what happened to his daughter at the beginning of it, so let's not go into it. It was Fair horrifying enough. and horrific, and um, yeah, but that. But you're right. Definitely a catchphrase. But yes, let's not go down that path. But yes, look, I really do hope a lot of these people do actually see their uh, see themselves wearing uh, what is it you wear in America? The orange jumpsuit. Um, the I, I I don't know. Do you know, personally, I just don't think it's going to happen. I, I really hope it does. But I just think these people are going to somehow get away with it all. It's going to be one of the great criminal scams mm. of the century, I, I reckon. The, I think you'd the be Trump surprised. Trump administration. Yeah, I think you'll be surprised. I think yeah. some people, at least, will be held accountable for what they did. Now, will it be everybody? I don't know. Um, I know that there's some evidence that Don Jr., um, committed perjury during a deposition in which he took an oath on camera because they were doing um, like audio, like video depositions for, I believe it may have been about the um, inauguration fund, um, the big inaugural party festivities oh, that they did the for Trump when he got, yes, and how much everything was overpaid. And he made some very serious and very clear lies, you know, false statements, when he said he didn't know, um, like, the woman who was doing all the work, the one who was uh, Melania's friend, uh, Stephanie something Wilcox or something, I can't remember her last name right now, and I'm not going to look it up, but, um, because it's not important, but anyway, um, I think that they already know that, because there's video evidence of him being at places with her, um, talking to her, mentioning her, and then in the deposition saying that he didn't really know her and um, he wouldn't be able to pick her out if, say, someone had showed her a picture, he wouldn't know who it was. And, you know, I, I, I don't recall ever being at that party. 
and things like that. And, I mean, he was very clearly there, and he very clearly knew her, and he very clearly had interactions. And so I'm hoping at least, if nothing else, he will get punished for that. You know, I really do. But mm. um, our DOJ is doing some d- due diligence right now. And, um, you know, they're, I think they're going to surprise us. I don't think we'll be satisfied with the outcome per se. Um, because, you know, a lot of us would sort of like to bring the guillotine back, you know. And I don't think that's necessarily a wrong idea in some instances. I'm not saying it's warranted particularly here, but I'm also not saying it's not. So <laughs> that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, what's, what, gonna, what's, it's a bit like yeah. you've now got, though, a, a Department of Justice that runs like the way a Department of Justice should run in a free and fair democracy. Unlike what you had four years ago, or for the last four years, (laughs) which was which was modelled off, I don't know, the Soviet Union, the the Junta the 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 fucking Juntas in Argentina, you know, I mean modelled off an authoritarian fucking government. Um so yeah. Yeah, there's a whole lot to unpack with everything that's come out and even though you know, and I know Twitter isn't real life, and people like to tell you that, but I, I don't understand how thousands and thousands of thousands of people could be on a social media site screaming at the media, showing them proof that, you know, independent journalists and stuff had done, um, even you know, like citizen journalists in a way, people on social media doing their own investigations and finding proof for things showing them to people in the media and these stories never came out in the national news, even on, um, even on something like MSNBC, um, very once in a while, they kind of sort of touch on something on one of the shows, but it would get lost. Um, I just, they I don't I've kind of lost my train of thought in a sense. They didn't prepare us at all for what was actually going on because they didn't cover anything, even though we were screaming about it. Tons and tons Mm. of us are screaming. These things are happening. Now, all of a sudden, the media, once this stuff is coming out now, all this time later, going, acting like this is the first fucking time they've ever heard this shit. Yeah. And I, and then I'm sorry, language, ta-da, but, um... (laughs) This this show comes with a language warning. It's fine. Don't don't worry. Well, I think if anybody has ever listened to this podcast, they know that I have a (laughs) potty mouth. I know. Okay. Look, I hang out with Teamsters on the set, okay? Really well. So if that says anything to you. <laughs> and I'm an Australian, that says enough. So yeah, yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, yeah. And so I'm going to I'm going to do that stuff, but I just get so frustrated because I understand again, Twitter isn't real life and all but all of these media personalities are on the internet. They're on Twitter. They were interacting with people in these, you know, the same people that were showing them these things and saying, hey, 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 look at this, you know, but instead of telling broad stories and telling us more than two things or three things that have happened in the day, all day long, every time a new show comes on, they say breaking news, and then they tell you the same story that broke at 7 a.m., Okay, so here's the yeah. thing, media. <laughs> you guys don't know what breaking news is anymore. News is breaking when it's breaking news, okay? That's when the news breaks. It's the first time you guys talk about it. That's the new story. After that, after seven shows and their pundits have talked about it, it's no longer breaking news. It's just news, okay? And We don't, like, more than three things are going on in our country and the world at any given time, any day. I don't understand why they pick three or two stories to just harp on all day long, and they miss all this other stuff. They miss everything, like, that we should be hearing about. They miss it, and I have to feel like sometimes that's by design. I mean, we know that the big corporations, even the ones that run supposedly more liberal media sites, are like run by Republican people for the most part. And I'm not saying the journalists and stuff that do the job on this on the shows are or the pundits. But I think we know when it comes down to it, the decisions are made at the top. And if it's a conservative 
corporation that backs Republicans um, and the people who are running it are people who back Republicans. It doesn't matter what they're saying on the air. I feel like sometimes they're just telling us enough to keep us hanging on, but not really be informed. And I, yes. and I have a real problem with that, you know, and I think the media needs to do some serious, serious soul searching to find journalism again. And we need the fairness doctrine back. And Fox News needs to be shown to be and, and labeled as, as they have in the courts, as entertainment only, not a news network. And But people don't know it. You know? Well, personally, I mean, I, I think the problem is that news, especially 24-hour news, um, which, thank God, we don't actually really have in Australia. We have um, even, we have two news networks which run 24 hours, but they actually don't. They actually only run 12 hours and then they switch to an affiliate overseas when they know nobody's watching news, um, you know, like at three in the morning. So we don't actually have 24-hour news services in Australia. Um, but I get and understand the way they work. And the problem is, it, it's like you said, it's it's entertainment. That's the problem. News has become entertainment. So the idea of um, a TV network would have its news division, its drama, its comedy, its documentaries, and so forth. Now everything is just entertainment. And so everything has to get a return. <laughs> Even the news has to get a return. Um, well, it, it, you know? It, it, yeah, it does. But you know what part of the problem is, too, is that it's not even really telling us the news anymore. What it is now, it's the same way I feel about some of the um, sports shows on television, the, the talk shows. Um, and anybody who knows me and anything about sports, like I love to go to the, any kind of sports event. I like to go. And I have a really good time. And I can really get into the game. But I really hate to watch stuff on TV. Um, it's boring to me. Um, what I really, 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 really hate, though, is a show, especially one that has Stephen A. Smith. And don't at me. I don't give a fuck. Um, can't stand that man. His voice triggers me the same way that Trump's does. I don't actually um, know who he is. I'm sorry. Well, you might not. But... I think anybody I'm sure who people lives in America that likes they sports, they know who Stephen A. Yeah. Smith is. And if you look him up and you watch him a few times, maybe you'll see why he annoys the, just the fuck out of me. I just can't stand that guy. And I, personally, I don't know him, but just like I don't want to listen to him. But what really bothers me about those types of shows is that those, are, those people aren't playing sports, okay? So, But they're sitting around talking about sports. So they'll tell you like one or two things that are, facts that are going on and then it's just bullshit opinion for the rest of the show people yelling at each other and arguing like raising their voices and getting mad over a goddamn game yeah where like where people are paid too much anyway i'm sorry it's bullshit but and i love sports when i can go to them i love to go to sports and see them and to arenas and stadiums and i i will go see anything like that um except for wrestling which is not a sport I don't care what anybody says. Um, and I'll car, I'm not going to any kind of car race, car races because that is also not a sport. People in cars driving in a circle is not a sport. Um, but I digress. Um, so, really? Yeah, yeah. That's unusual so for this show. So what I hate about news now is that it's not somebody sitting at a, an anchor desk delivering the news stories of the day to you to get informed. And then maybe delving into them a little deeper on some of the other shows. That's not what happens. Now it's people sitting at a desk and all they're doing is talking about the news stories, talking about other people's opinions about the news stories. Um, the news stories are now so-and-so says that this other person shouldn't be doing this thing. And it's like, why the fuck would I care what this person says? They're not even like involved in this government thing. This is like a, you know, a tennis player. Like who gives a fuck what their opinion is? Mm. And why are you going to spend 20, a 20 minute segment talking about it on a news channel? And you're right. It is because we have to fill these 24 hour news cycles now. But see, I think that it could be done better. If we're filling 24 hour news cycles, here's a thing. The reason why it's hard to do it is because they're trying to fill 24 hours with two or three stories a day. But there's so much going on all over the country. And why don't we 
tell everybody nationally what's going on in different pockets of the country. Like, go from region to region. And the world. And tell them, like, the top story and the world. Tell them the top stories going around. I shouldn't have to listen to 14 hours of them talking about whether or not Biden sounded like he stuttered when he said this oh, speech. And yeah. blah, blah, blah. Like, I, I don't care if the man stuttered. I mean, no, he's not an eloquent speaker. But it also isn't selling our country off to our to our enemies in pieces, you know, like that I know of. OK, um, like I just there's so much more that we could be informed by. But our media fails us at every fucking turn now. There are no more Walter Cronkite's at the desk. Mm. See, it used to be that we didn't have all these 24 hour stations and everybody, especially in the U.S. And I don't know how it was in Australia, but here. When I was growing up, there was no cable news. We had like three national channels, like the three major network channels, and then like a PBS and maybe one local channel and maybe one other local channel if we were lucky. Okay. But at night, to watch the news, you turn everybody turn, tuned in to one of three network news shows. You had the local news before. And then it would go into the ne to the national evening news. Now, no matter which channel you watched it on, the same stories would be there. They would you, they would give you the facts of the story, and then the only time you heard somebody's opinion is if they brought somebody on to do a little op ed kind of segment. That would be it. But they would tell you it was an opinion, and then that would be it for this for the show. They would go from region to region and tell you stories. And you didn't have to worry about whether or not they were biased because the whole point was they weren't biased. The stories were giving you the facts. So as a nation, everybody got the same news and we understood the same things. And even if you had different opinions about it, at least you didn't say this was fake news and that was fake news because there was no fake news really. And I'm not saying there weren't false flag operations and shit like that that the government lied about and that they reported. But I'm saying for the most part, Everybody was getting the same information, and they were getting it from people that they trusted every night behind the desk. And we just don't have that anymore. It's yes. all opinions. It's talking about talking about things instead of actually informing our nation. And we are weaker for it today, and I think that's part of the reason we ended up with people like Trump and that we have the problems we do now with these idiots in Congress that are, you know, QAnon weirdos and just I don't know, man. It's 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 very frustrating. Well, what what percentage of Americans would have cable TV? Do you reckon? You know, I don't know that statistic, and if I tried to pull it out of my ass, I'm sure that it would. No, be I, I just, for I'm any... just curious. Even like I don't cause, know because it's like if I was to um, look at my circle of friends and acquaintances, let's say over the last twenty years, okay. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that 90% through that period have had cable TV at one point or the other. Mm -hmm. Right now, in 2021, cable's now delivered differently. It's now delivered via the internet rather than a physical cable, the way it used to be. Um, but I I'm only know of two people <laughs> who actually have cable television now. Right, you're right. right. So because now it's, it's kind it of used to be everyone. Everyone yeah. used to have it. Absolutely. You know, um, yeah. Well, the streaming services kind of and killed it. Did that, and then the cell phone service. Like, we don't really need to have things attached to the house anymore, like that, in a sense. And I think what you'll find probably is that the older people mostly still have cable, like, and, it, and we have it. Um, because, you know, I live with my mother and, um, we don't just have streaming services. I do like some of the services that I can't get streaming, um, cable, but I don't like most of the channels. And what I find is that they have the same channel, like six different times on the lineup, even though they're saying they have, you know, 2000 stations. Well, you really don't <laughs> because yes. you put the channels over and over again in the lineup for no reason. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't love that side of it. We love the streaming services. So I think more just like with landline telephones nowadays, you'll find probably the older generation here in America, at least, are the ones that have those. Just like AOL web addresses or like email addresses. 
you can almost always tell if somebody is an older person if they still have an AOL email address when they give it to you. That they got in 1995. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I recently had to explain to somebody why I they weren't going to that I wasn't going to put um electronic music on the landing page like on their homepage of their website. And I and that was like because this isn't 1994. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what else to tell you like Yeah. You know, we did that a little bit in maybe 99 at the latest, but you just like things change and you don't do that. <laughs> it's like no at all. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, I, I, they're slow to come with technology, you know, a lot of them. So, um, older people. So, um, and here I say that at reaching the age I am, but it's true. I mean, I still have to ask my kid for stuff sometimes when it comes to finding stuff on my phone, which is embarrassing. You know? So, I think it happens to all of us. But the and technology, the technology has gotten better so quickly, it's hard to keep up. It you is, know? but it's, but it is so much easier to use. I mean, um, I, I mean, do you remember? I mean, if if you went back to, the, oh, when let let let's call it the mid nineties, okay, yeah. um, to get internet, um, everyone was still basically using dial up internet, unless you were super rich oh, and yeah. you could afford an ISDN, <laughs> you know, sort of service, uh, which yeah. doubled your speed. <laughs> Um, you know, all people were getting twin services where they were actually getting twin modems and then trying to rejoin the feed at the other end and, and all this sort of stuff. Um, that sounds above my head. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. Um, but anyway, and, um, uh, but the, um, uh, but setting it up was not that simple. Like, no, not you, if you, like didn't know you had to one. load, you had to get into a computer, you had to load drivers and match the driver to the thing. Yeah. And then, like, but yeah. like now you just plug something in and it works. If you don't even plug it in. Do you, Do like, you remember? The, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just saying now you just bring it home, open the box, turn it on. And it sort of says, hello, uh, please yeah. put your phone next to me. Oh, you are now set up. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, it's well, amazing. Do you remember the first time you ever used the internet or saw the internet? Do you remember when that was? Oh, um, I'm trying to think now. First time I ever saw it or used it would have been mid nineties, ninety five. Okay, so that was a probably, little before me. About probably Does... about nineteen ninety five, I think. Okay. When it was all just news groups and stuff, you know? Oh, oh God, yeah. I mean, yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. people were still using and DOS. Chat. Then it became um, chat rooms. and Yeah, but the news groups things. See, I, the first time I ever even knew the internet existed, okay, was 1997. And one of our friends was a cameraman that I worked on uh, WMAC Masters with. He wanted to come over and show us the internet. We were like, what the hell is he talking about? And they're like, we knew, like we had heard of the internet, but he wanted to show it to us. And so we were like, okay, he brought his entire desktop computer to our house. Now that was with, at the time yeah. in 97, it was the big tower and the fat monitor, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I lived on the fourth floor of a walk, a fourth floor walk up without an elevator. <laughs> yeah. And he carried that stuff up and brought it to the house and plugged it in and took the phone thing and plugged it in and did this thing and it made the horrible noise and he went on and I saw it and I was just like, so it's like a Commodore 64. Yeah. (laughs) The floppy disk game kind of thing. I was like, but it was just news groups and, and I didn't understand a goddamn thing that was going on. And I just remember that moment just being like, what the hell is this? Why would I need this? Because it didn't make sense to me. But then, you know, AOL came out with their little discs, the little CDs that they started sending out to people. And you could put it in and get like a free month of it and started trying it because I had a computer because working in casting and stuff, we did a lot of word processing. And so, you know, it was the time when you would type all the lists and the printer was so slow that to, to, to print out all the names took all night long so that you could go to the set with the site, you know, with, with the uh, lists and everything. And 
it was just that time period where everything was took a long time and we still had to fax things. And um, when we did uh, auditions, we had to actually put them on a tape, like a real tape that they would put into the big camera, you know, not like a, a TV camera, but like a home video camera yeah. that held like VHS tapes in it. And you'd have to you'd tape everybody and then get everything together printed and rush it to the airport and send it off. And now once that once we figured out the internet and once it became something more than just news groups, um it changed the industry forever. And I mean, it's so much easier now even because before then like we were able to get emails and stuff, which was shocking. And fax kind of started to fade away. And um, then you could send things in email and you couldn't really do much more than that, but it still started to change it. But now the industry is, there are no more like, you don't have to have paper headshots all the time because most of the time you're doing submissions, you're doing it electronically. You're signing up for things on the web. You're you know getting your audition stuff on the web. I mean, it's just changed everything. And if you if you think about the fact that our phones that we're carrying in our hand hold more power in them than we had at at NASA in the Moker area or anything and all the computers that they used to to send us to the moon. Well, the, the computer. Time. Okay, I'll put it this way. Um, I, I won't use my car; it's a little bit too modern. So I just got a new car. But your average car of twenty years ago is twenty years ago still had a bigger computer inside it than the computer inside Apollo 11. And that thing flew to the moon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, we did that. And, and, this, and, this, yeah, and this, is a, this is a car of 20 years ago, let alone now. Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah it, it, it's, it's, it is amazing. Yeah. Uh, how the it's technology gone. has gone infinitely faster and faster. Since uh, the aliens crashed in, in Roswell. And we in got, Roswell, we, that's right. We and got changed the everything. technology that we reverse engineered. And, um. <laughs> well, actually, we're talking about space and everything. Um, yeah. uh, Collins died during the week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's, there's now only one surviving uh, person from Apollo 11. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, Buzz, Ald uh, Buzz Aldrin. So it's, yeah, well... Um, yeah, he's he's a tough man, man. He's not. Oh, yeah. Don't don't ever <laughs> say the moon without a fight. <laughs> it was a, don't ever say the moon landings are a conspiracy because he'll punch oh you in the face. Um, I he, thought that was fan fucking tastic. When he punched out, the, <laughs> when he punched the guy out for saying. <laughs> yes, and the guy deserved it because get out of that astronaut's face! Don't tell that guy he didn't go to the moon. Fuck you! Yeah, I know. It's unbelievable, <laughs> no, it's isn't like, it? Just, Absolutely, like, I'm, I'm like what the hell have you done, sir? Nothing. That's why you're mad. <laughs> it's. Well, I mean, it's like. Um, I mean, what they did was just so astounding, uh, I, and it really was exploration by the seat of their pants. You know, I mean, they were they had pushed the envelope, and yeah. they had gone the next step, and they were still oh, yeah. going. You know, like uh, they would pushed science and engineering as. far far as it could go and they were still pushing the limit even further and they're literally sort of saying ah oh, bugger the risk let's just go you know i mean the yeah. risks were huge for what they were doing um Absolutely. you know these white people jumping out of planes with with the first test parachute oh maybe it'll open maybe it won't uh, I, I mean the fact that the apollo and ast astronauts went with cyanide capsules they yeah. actually took cyanide capsules with them because yeah. if they got stranded, well, it would be you better to go quick than to go slow. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you, know, you know how I feel about the space program in general. I mean, you know I'm a huge space nerd. Mm. Um, and you know I worked on From the Earth to the Moon. I feel very attached to the whole, like, Apollo um, program because of that. And even though... I didn't um, get to meet like the actual astronauts just being like getting to walk into the set where we had um, mission control because we, we actually shot that at Kennedy Space Center. And so we had the old mission control set right there. It was there. 
And it was amazing to walk in there. And I still, to this day, if I see any of those episodes or I see anything from it, I still feel so privileged to have just put extras on the stage um, because they did such a great job making them all look perfect. And I had such a great time choosing all the, the moker guys and the Simtex and the guidos and all. So like I got yeah. really into the space program because of it. And um, besides the fact that I always wanted to be an astronaut when I was younger until I heard you had to be good at math. And then I was like, oh, well, screw that. <laughs> uh, <yes. laughs> yeah, it's, it's like that idea of, you know, it's like Top Gun. It's, you know, it's like, oh, we're the fighter jocks. No, those fighter jocks have all gone to university. They have mathematical or, you know, degrees. They have engineering degrees. These are not the rebels of society. Yeah. The guys flying these F-18s and F-35s or, you know, or, or girls, I should say, um, obviously, because you've got women, um, women. these days flying them. Um, <laughs> sorry. I've got to get into the habit. No when I girls say girls are going there yet, because they're all adults, so they are women. Did I say girls? Did I? Women. You oh, did. Sorry. You did. That's, I love uh, it when I get to scold you on air, Warren. Sorry. That's, yeah, that's a, that's a bad <laughs> terminology I use. It's like, I use guys to mean men and women, and I shouldn't, because it's, it's not really right. And, and I do say girls when I mean women. I, oh, I know. Anyway, sorry about that. I do anyway. too, okay. Um, but, but I also um, call everybody dude. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, <laughs> but, but, but the thing is that they're all been, oh, I'm, I'm the rebel. I sit back and I drink beer and I didn't even finish school. But, you know, I'm going to be Top Gun. It's like, no, you're not. No, you're not. You would have been the school nerd if you want to be Top Gun, because they're the ones who go on to fly those th bloody things. They're the school nerds. They're the ones who did really well in maths. The ones who do science degrees, engineering degrees. They fly the F-35s, you know? I wouldn't know. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, I always think no, it's I kind know, of so funny. I'm just like, I, I didn't do the maths. Yeah. Um, I had to take a sem one semester of like consumer mathematics my senior year just to graduate from high school um, because I did not do well in geometry. But in my defense, it was being caught, taught by a football coach. Um, and I didn't know anything about football, what? but I was in a class filled with football players and cheerleaders who seemed to all understand the diagrams and analogies he was making. So, right. um, but so, but I've never been good at math until I got into the university and then I started getting A's in like, al like I had to take the, like the developmental algebra, which is like algebra one from high school. And, uh, I finally got A's cause I finally had a teacher that taught, taught me, but I'm still never going to be a mathematician. <laughs> I was, I was actually, I, I can't believe I, I, I think I can say it these days it's, it's too late to make a difference now. I was never good at math. <laughs> Never good at math. Um, and, uh, but you're an engineer. You have yeah, to be good at math to be yeah. an engineer? I, just, I mean, I you thought, think it would be a bonus? Yeah, I know. I just, I just <laughs> scraped through by the skin of my teeth to do what I had to do, you know? Um, I still remember when I was at university having to do hydrology, and hydrology it is water flow. It's all formulas. Yes. It's it's pure dynamic. and utter math, you know? And um, yeah. and, and it's like, oh my, I scraped through that. I, I literally, I think came out of it with 51%, you know, it was passing by the skin of my teeth, hydrology. Oh my <laughs> God. I'm really good at drawing though, you know? Um, really? yeah, really, really good. So, you know, I could sit on the, on the drafting boards and it was really, really good. Used to do really well at all of that. But yeah, doing the calculations of water flows and stuff, and it's oh. like, oh fuck, no. I, I mean, I'll thank God something. in the real world, I still I don't count have on to, my fingers. I don't, yeah, <laughs> I don't have to do any of that, you know. So, <laughs> well, although actually, it's not quite true. I do math. I have to use math every bloody day. I sit there with a calculator, calculating numbers. Oh, that dear, sounds like just, hell to me. It's, <laughs> it's I, I, I like it because it's a very black and white world. It's a world where there's a right answer and there's a wrong answer. There's no in between, you know. Like you, you can't, you can't have grey. Like it's, it either is or it isn't. And See, and I think a, that's something I like about it. It's it's you know whether you're right or whether you're wrong. You know, you you'd say that, but I, I know somebody who um, argues about the rules of algebra. Um, they want to argue why they think their way is better 
even though it comes out with a different answer. And you know oh. why? <laughs> Their answer comes you've out a lot, in you've a different done a lot way. Matthew because the guys. you yeah. you have to do the formula. That's why it's the formula. You can't just. It's not the philosophy of algebra. Okay, it's not the metaphysical side of algebra. Um, it's the it's goddamn algebra. Like just follow the formulas. It's not that difficult, but they don't. They they just want to argue about the the logical nature of why the formula is that way. And it might be my child. I'm not going to say it is, but it might be. <laughs> well, there's um, there's 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 a fantastic song which is from the 1960s um, by a uh, comedian songwriter, and I've forgotten his name. Um, and um, he writes a song called "The New Math." And it's and it's all about how now with the new math, um, and this was in the, from the sixties too, right? Yeah. But he's talking about the idea yeah. of the old world for the new world, where the old world was you just do the math and get the answer, but the new math is more about the child or the student understanding how to get the answer rather than getting <laughs> the actual answer, and and then and, and this whole song is about doing a calculation. A simple, a simple division, right? But he keeps changing the rules all the time. So each verse, he changes the rules. So it starts off, I don't know what it is. It's like, you know, a thousand divided by 20 or something. But then he will change and he, and he goes through the entire equation in song form. But then in the second verse, he'll sort of say, oh, let's, uh, well, that would be right, but not, you know, if in our world, because let's do it in base eight which is the way an octopus would do it. And then he does the whole thing in base eight, right? And, he, and uh, it's absolutely hilarious. I, um, it's not Peter Lear. I, 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 I cannot remember the guy's name, but he was a very, very funny um, uh, comedian, singer, songwriter uh, from the 1960s in the United States and huh. um, sang some fantastic songs. Um, uh, the one about the... Uh, Third World War, and I, I can still remember. There's the great line. It's you know, it's like mm-hmm. um, you know, this guy goes off to war. You know, to the next war. It's the it's the new war song, the new war anthem. And he says, "Don't worry, mother. I'll be back to see you when the war is over, an hour and a half from now." Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I have no um, idea who that is. Ah, oh, it's it's. Um, I can't remember. We will have to, at some stage, I would imagine. If somebody have a knows, break, I will inform look it us. Up. I'll look it up and I'll, I'll let people know. Um, but, it um, is. yeah, so anyway. <laughs> but, but anyway, but, the, but one, of, one of the things I was actually thinking, it was a subject of discussion that came up with a couple of people I knew the other day, actually, which was mm-hmm. that we were talking about the fact that, you know, Michael Collins had, had passed on. And, um, we were talking about, you know, obviously there's the conspiracy about, you know, obviously we didn't land on the moon and all the rest of it, which we know, apart, I mean, there's a fucking mirror there. I'm not even going to go down the path, but has there ever <laughs> been a conspiracy theory? Not not something where the government has lied to people and it's turned out that they've lied, but an actual conspiracy theory, which has turned out to be true. Mm. Well, I mean, everything is is a conspiracy until a conspiracy theory until it comes <laughs> but, but to, I mean, until it turns but I mean out to be true. Real, but, like, but a real conspiracy theory, you know, like humans had didn't land on the moon, Roswell aliens. Um, well, you know, I mean, it, some people would say yes because they believe that the Roswell aliens were true, and I'm and I mean, I'm not saying that I don't think that aliens are out there or anything. Um, I think that to say that we would be alone in this universe would be highly arrogant. Um, I, I don't know about, I don't know the answer to that question. That is a good question. Um, conspiracy theory. Because I you know, Lauren, you have stumped me. I don't well, know. I stood by the argument and, and everyone was in the same, exactly the same thought that you have right now. Everyone went, I don't know. And I don't think there has ever been a conspiracy theory, which I've heard some people sort of say, oh, the Gulf of Tonkin. Yeah, but that wasn't a conspiracy theory. That was a false flag operation. Yeah, that, that's where the government lied. There's a very different, you know, sort of scenario. But an yeah. actual conspiracy theory where 
um, you know, people were, well, we don't have to explain what a conspiracy theory is. Um, yes, so, you do not have to do that. No, I, I, I just I feel, <laughs> you know, <sighs> Warren, Warren, you idiot. Um, but yeah, so, but it's, it's an interesting one, you know, it, it's like that other great dinner table or dinner party conversation, you know, has there ever been a spin off show from a TV show that was better than the show it spun off from? Uh, I think we might've even talked about this on the show before. I can't remember actually. Um, mm. it's been 12 months and a lot of alcohol, uh, you know, um, <laughs> yes. but, Yes, uh, but, you know, but I think there have been some spin off shows which have been more successful than the original shows. Not very that often, but sometimes. Case. That may be, case, may be the case. Sometimes I forget that some shows are spin offs of other shows. And right now, like, honestly, like off the top of my head, other than like Falcon Crest in Dallas, I think, or Knott's Landing, I think it was Falcon Crest, which that like, was a spin off of that. And I think maybe yeah. we talked about that. Um, other than. That I don't know. The only one I can really think of is NCIS. It was NCIS was a spin off of JAG. And I think NCIS was yeah. much bigger than JAG was. But then they had like and then they had like uh was it CIS? Oh well Miami NCIS then even spun NCIS off into came its came from Yeah, I mean the thing is that NCIS came from JAG, so it was a spin off of JAG. But then NCIS was just so big itself, it had two spin-offs itself. See, so, I get so sick of those medical dramas, though. Well, well that's a, well, no, it's a crime one. NCIS is a crime. Oh, that's a, oh the cop shows? Okay, those, yeah. that, that's just as bad. I, the, the two things that I'm really, really tired of seeing are cop shows and doctor <laughs> shows, okay? Oh, don't like, get a hot comment. At least if you're going to do don't a doctor a show, let's see crime. something new. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm sick and tired of the cop shows, though, man. Because they glorify the stuff, and they also make people think things happen easily that they don't, which TV is bad for anyway. Do you know I actually had to explain to somebody why the episode of, of um, uh, Big Bang Theory, where Penny starts a hair bow business and sets up oh, a website and in 15 yeah. minutes has 3,000 orders and yeah, blah, 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 yeah. was not realistic. Because yep. they just couldn't like wrap their head around the fact that that's not how the internet works, and TV tells people that that's the way things work, and then they're upset when it doesn't work like that, and you're not a magic, you know, you don't have a magic wand to make it happen for them. Well, well, that's, so... that's, how did Penny with? Okay, so Leonard Reed designs the website. Okay, fair yes. enough. Um, he changes it once, once he decides that it's not going to look like what is it an early thousands girls young girls my um my space page my space page yes <laughs> that's right um and um but there's zero advertising zero money has been invested no. and it's been like three minutes since she gets and, an and, order and we're talking 24 48 hours that whole episode is made to take out yeah and 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 she's been swamped with orders, yes. um, and it's like, yeah, you're right. It, it's yeah, but then again, it is a comedy. You know, are we meant? Yeah, to take I know, it but it doesn't but... matter because people see TV and they think it's real. That's why we yeah. talked about the fact that having movies and shows that distort the historical drama for the sake of mm. creative license, you know, um, is it does a disservice to the to the public and people who view it because let's be honest, especially here in America, people like the cliff note versions of anything. Okay. They don't really want to have to do a lot of thinking. They're going to turn on the TV or they're going to watch a movie and whatever it is on there. If they think it's a historical show or they think it might be real, that's what they think happens. And unless they really have the capacity for abstract reasoning, a lot of people never move beyond that until they are confronted with it in some way, which usually leads to some white lady calling the, for, to talk to the manager. So, you mm. know. Yeah. It is, I mean, it is a shame, isn't it, that... Um, that people are stupid, I mean, I, yes. I, would, I would wonder whether <laughs> most people, most people today know about, we're talking about Apollo 11 before, Apollo yes. 13 know about what happened on Apollo 13 purely because of the movie. Yes. Um, Do you know how many people think Braveheart, the the movie Braveheart is like historically accurate? 
Well, it's real, but it's not accurate. Yes, I know. Yeah, although don't tell Scott that. They'll get very upset. They love it. Oh. But it's, well. it's, 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 um, you know, you know, they've even got a statue of fucking, um, Mel Gibson done up as Braveheart, as William Wallace. Yeah, it's really bad. But, 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 but was it, is it, is it really him in the scene where he, where he was fucking? Because. Hey, what? what? Warren, you didn't, you said it was fucking really. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I, you know what? It's my fault for trying to make lame jokes. No, I'm not it's, even it's, a dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'll look with Mel Gibson. Who knows what he was up to? I mean, you know, oh God, he's so one, one of the, the world's great being. atrocities, isn't he? He's one of the great world's abominations. You know, it's a bit like we're glad he's not American citizenship. He's not ours anymore. He's yours. You can worry. about You know, him. it's so sad too we because him. before that. Before I re- knew who he was and when he really started showing his ass in public, um, I really liked his movies a lot. Oh, like, hey. I really enjoyed Braveheart. I knew it wasn't historical, but I really enjoyed it. I thought there's several. I think he's a good director, to be honest. But I don't want to go see any more of his movies now. But, like, mm. The Patriot, that was that was a movie that I really liked to watch because, again... I, the Heath Ledger thing, and 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 on top of it, it was just a. I love historical dramas, even if yeah. they're not like I like in the historical settings. They don't have to be historically yes, accurate. Because I think the Patriot draws on license a lot. It's it's not. Well, it it does, but you know, it's a compilation character. I um, mean, you know, it's what's strange. Um, somebody in my family tree is actually one of the people that they used to mash together to make the character that he played in the Patriot. Oh, um, wow. Captain Rafe Stewart. Right. I'm related to him through, you know, Noah's dad. And right. um, so, right. um, yeah, so um, he was actually one of the people, um, some of the stuff that he did um, was used to create the character of the wow. Patriot. So I thought wow. that was kind of neat. So yeah. famous. A famous member of the uh, Revolutionary uh, War. Wow, that's um, well, yeah. And I amazing. also have a I also have a relative, um, Captain Josiah Monroe. Um, I'll just say this now because I'm name dropping from the past. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he was um, a captain in um, the Continental Army, and he actually died at Valley Forge under George Washington. Yeah, I'm not sure yeah. if he starved to death or froze to death, but he did fight under George Washington and right. died at Valley Forge. So, um, but I think that's kind of interesting to be able to say that one tiny little branch of my family had a connection to something like that. You know? I, I think it's amazing because I've got very little connection to the history of the country I live in because my yeah. family arrived so late in its right. story, you know, right. um, I, I have a, a connection into the second world war because my grandfather joined the Australian army. Um, so, uh, it was, so, uh, so there is a connection in that and it was decorated. I mean, yes, you want a medal, wow. um, uh, in Papua New Guinea. Yes. Um, and I still remember when he was alive, he told me the story of how he won it. And, um, and he was more, he was always, he was more concerned about the fact that he had, um, should I tell a story or not? Yeah, tell me the story. Really? Okay. No, absolutely. I was just going to say, tell me the story. Okay. He was he was a captain in the army at the time, and uh, he there was a uh, transport aircraft which had crashed. It had crashed, had been shot down, or whatever. Now this was in the Owen Stanley Mountains in Park New Guinea, so everything's vertical, nothing's flat. It's like the Swiss Alps. It's up or down. It's forty degrees Celsius and ninety nine percent humidity. It's the most horrendous environment you can, you know, possibly think of, right? Everybody had either malaria or dysentery. The food, they were living out of tins of bully beef and, I mean, didn't have enough medicine. You know, there was, sur- this is 1942 and they're still doing surgery without anesthetic because they yes. couldn't get the drugs in. And, you know, I mean, it was the most horrific bloody campaign mm-hmm. of the Second World War. And um, first time... The Japanese were ever stopped, and it was by Australian Army reservists. But this is just a, another story. But anyway, so he was there, and um, they had all these helpers, uh, which they called Fuzzy Wuzzy Angels. 
<laughs> a lot of people view it as a, a racist term, but the Papuans don't. They actually view it as a form of respect. And it has to do with the hairstyle that they wore. Um, it was this very fuzzy hair. Um, like, like you, know, you know like that 70s Afro hairstyle? Very popular in the United States. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, it's like that, but even bigger. It was like huge, mm. right? Sort okay. of thing. And so they were called fuzzy wuzzies. Um, kind of like, a, it was kind of disrespectful. But then when the war kicked off proper, they employed them all as um, as bearers and as stretcher bearers. Also as reconnaissance troops, they then started arming them, actually, like, actually arming them. Um, and they then changed their name to fuzzy wuzzy angels because they said, <laughs> if because this was the story, if you were wounded on the Kokoda track, which was in Papua New Guinea, it was a three-day trip back to a hospital on wow. stretcher, up and down, right? So you had to... and But the thing was, when they saw the Fuzzy Wuzzies, right, they'd pick them up on the stretcher and they called them angels because they said, we're in angels' hands now. We're going to live. Right. I'm going to live. I'm in angels' hands now. And the Australians, they loved them. They fell in love with the with the Papua New Guinean population. And um, so, anyway, he was um, he was a captain. He was uh, took his sergeant, and he not, but he didn't take any other Australian soldiers. He took three angels with him, who were armed. Um, they were actually armed, and they went off to because it was viewed as being a pretty low mission. We just want you to go, you know, fifty kilometres and. Go to the plane, and we want you to just, see, I don't know, see if there's anyone alive or whatever the fuck it was, right? So right. Um, so, so they weren't going to send anybody important, you know, for this. So they did that. So they got there. When they got there, they were met by the Japanese. And mm. a huge firefight ensued in which two of the angels were, uh, were killed. His sergeant was wounded. Um, and... Uh, but they, but there was like the five of them, and remember the angels had no training; they were just given a gun, right? They had no right. training at all, right? And they were literally engaged thirty Japanese soldiers, and they actually engaged them and fought their way out of it. Um, and he was mentioned in dispatches and got a medal for it. Wow! For the fact that they actually engaged this number of Japanese and actually survived. Um, so yeah, there's that, the story. Yeah. yeah, and the interesting thing was that his brother um, had gone to England and joined the Royal Air Force and <laughs> was a pilot. Okay, oh, and he okay. was stationed in Malta. But he here's the spooky bit. If we want to go, do 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 do, right? He was flying a bow fighter, which is like a a, a British. Um, fighter bomber, okay, out of Malta, okay. okay, and he attacked a German submarine. By himself, he single-handedly sunk the submarine, okay, the U-boat, and um, he was awarded, this, uh, he was mentioned in dispatches, same medal. It then turned out, th it actually happened on the same day. Really? So the two brothers were awarded the same medal on the same day on the opposite side of the globe. That's actually pretty cool. Okay, and it was, and it, it then got the story then broke, and my mother still has a cutting from an Australian newspaper which doesn't exist anymore. It was called the Argus. Okay, back then, uh -huh. and she still has the cutting, the original cutting, and there is an actual story in the newspaper about this amazing coincidence how these two Swiss boys, right, <laughs> these these two fucking brothers, one in the Australian Army and one in the British Air Force, received the same medal on the same day on other sides of the planet. That's and actually, it actually cool. And it actually made the newspaper. Yeah. And my yeah. mother still has the cutting. That's really neat. Yeah, See? yeah. Quite yeah. amazing. Absolutely yeah, amazing. Yeah, so anyway, that's just a, a bit of a story for you. Yeah, I always like a little bit of history. I, you mm. know, I, that's one thing I've always thought would be cool to do, a show where you went around, especially to like senior centers, nursing homes and things like that where people were older. And because, you know, everybody has like a story, right? You can, there's, everybody has a story they could tell. Something that happened from their life or something from, 
you know, somebody from their past or anything like in their ancestry. And I just feel like it would be really cool to do a show where you went around and you recorded a bunch of people talking, whatever their story was. And then you recreated it for the audience using the person as a voiceover and cutting in and out. I always thought that'd be kind of fun to do. You know, I reckon you would find the most amazing stuff. Yeah. You know, right. Um, because you just never know what's it. Cause everybody's got some story that's interesting. Uh, regardless of how boring they think their life has been. I, I'll lay on. So you'd, you'd go into old people's homes or retirement cent. I shouldn't use that. Retirement centers, um, mm-hmm. retirement communities. And yeah. I read you'd walk around with the microphone. And you sit sort of down. Oh, and what did you do? Oh, I was, I was JFK's chauffeur. What? Exactly. You'd, do you know what I mean? Definitely find and, some stuff like that. And, yeah. And, and we'd just be somebody just, you know, yeah. Or oh, yeah, I worked with NASA. I was the one who actually closed the hatch on Apollo 11 team, uh, Apollo 11 before it launched, you know, yep. what yep. really? Yeah. I mean, and, and the problem is that those people's stories, which are yes, small, but so amazing at the same time, it's will just get lost into his, into nothing yep. because yep. yeah. Who's going to remember them if you don't, if you don't, get it recorded and you know that's the thing is I think as I got older and now I do my family's genealogy my grandfather my dad's father um used to do that and um nobody else in the family seemed to care about it at all when he passed away I took on the responsibility of doing it because I didn't want everybody's stories to be lost I have interesting stories in my family but who's going to remember them You know, they're not written in books and things like that. So if you don't take the time to talk to your grandparents and your like your older family members, and I'm just going to say this to anybody who's listening, honestly, go and take the time and ask them questions and and take the time to record them or write it down. At least Um, find out stories about them. You will be amazed about how older people had a whole entire lives, like (laughs) amazing lives before they became your grandparents or anything like that. And and I think if we if we just remembered to do that before we got to be in our forties and fifties really, um, and started really losing people, um, I don't know. I feel like we would cherish our histories more. I feel like we would cherish our families more. I feel like we would cherish the stories of people more. If we realize that average people have amazing stories. They don't have to be a hero to tell you an amazing story about something that happened in their life, you know? And I I just think it just, I just think it would be so nice if everybody did that because I, I miss doing it with my grandparents. I, I didn't get as much information as I, as I wanted, as I needed now that I, like I'm desperate to find. And I didn't ask questions that I could have easily asked when I didn't know what to say to them. You know, when you reach the age where you just don't have a lot in common and you don't talk to them a lot, but there's so many questions you could just ask. And I just encourage people to do that. Don't, don't wait till it's too late and then regret not doing it. Yes. It's, um, it, it's a bit like, um, like for instance, I, um, um, have my father's old watch, which he used to wear when he was in the, um, the, uh, was my, my family's very confusing, even though I've got Swiss heritage into <laughs> Australia, but my father is British, so, <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I am really a mixed mongrel. Um, and um, uh, when he he was in the parachute regiment in Britain, he was a paratrooper right. when he was very young, and um, he on his twenty first. I was trying to remember his twenty first or his eighteenth. Must have been his eighteenth birthday. Um, my grandmother, who, who died before I was even born, um, she uh, was on holiday and she was in, it was either, I think it was Munich, I think it was Munich in Germany. Who the fuck in 19, so how would, old would he have been then? It, it was like not in 55 or something like this. I mean, who the fuck holidays in Germany in 1955? But anyway... <laughs> Um, German people, I guess. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, I know. But or the from, Swiss. But from Britain? You know, really? I, I don't oh, know. Well, you know, I, we've discussed this before. Uh, anyway, anyway. <laughs> people have layers. Yeah, yeah, I know. So anyway, so <laughs> she was in there. And um, German watches, they're on the, the, the comeback now. But back then, 
German watches were big. Like they were big, expensive items, and um, a bit like Swiss watches are st- still are today, right? And mm-hmm. uh, she bought him a Jungens. A Jungens is a German brand, still actually um, going today. Fully German movement, made in Germany, and they still are today as well. And okay. uh, anyway, she she bought it for him. And as an native birthday, and he wore that jumping out of aeroplanes and doing all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. And then he got a commission with P and O sailing the world. That's where he met my mother, actually, well, on a oh. cruise ship. And um, um, he was an engineering officer on. Uh, yeah, does, apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And um, and he was <laughs> um, and uh, and he was on P and O, and he wore that sailing around the world. You know, and all the rest of it. Now I've yeah. got the watch still. My father gave it to me several years ago. And I still wear it from time to time. Well, Not cool. a lot anymore, but his watches from the 50s are very small, right? So, yeah. Um, you I like tend... the big watches, I know. <laughs> well, well, no, just everybody does. I mean, 30 millimeters was an average men's watch in the 50s. The average watch size now of a dress watch is 42 millimeters. That gives you an idea of how much it's, it's changed. Um, luckily the size is going back down. Seen a lot of dress watches now in 38. Sorry, I'm talking watches. I'm not, I, I always promised I wouldn't do that, but, <laughs> but, 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 so, so I'll, I'll stop talking about the history of watches, but here's, here's you the thing. always tell the passion. <laughs> but the has. thing was that I, I wear it every now and again, and you want to see my father's face when he hears that I wear that watch. The fact that it's, this thing bought, by he, his mother, given to him, now given to me, and it's still being worn. Well, that's part of, the, and, you know, an heirloom. I know, and uh, and and he thinks it's, and it, he always sort of says, I just wish it was a fucking Rolex. Well, <laughs> Rather, yeah, duh. But, but, and then, but, then, but then my mother sort of goes, it's a, but no, but it's German, it's better. And my father just oh, looks at her and goes, "Oh God, <laughs> oh, God!" So, yeah. And um, but uh, but no, but Germany German watches have always been excellent. They still are. They're they're very good. So, um, but <laughs> the problem I've got now is I don't know what to give it to, right? So because oh. my daughter's not going to wear it, and my grandkids are, do- are, are girls. So it's like but that doesn't mean that they still wouldn't cherish it. Look, I have things that belong to my dad that I still love, and my grandfather, and I honestly have um, one of my father-in-law's um, leather jackets. It was rust-colored leather um, leisure coat um, from the seventies, and it fit me perfectly. And the mother-in-law let me have it, and I was like, "Oh yes," and I rock that thing. And I love it because it's weird and it's retro and it, it's an heirloom to me, you know. Eventually, I'll give it to Noah, but he'll never be able to fit into it. So, <laughs> well, he's broad. And no, 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 no. I know what you mean. was well, not. Well, well, no, no, no. But it's not just that. I mean, people are getting bigger all the time. Um, even sleep people are huge compared to people from 100 years ago. Oh I mean, God, I you know, know. I, I mean, even people who were incredibly slim are still huge in comparison. I've um, been looking at my draft, like draft cards from my ancestors as I've been doing the genealogy. And yeah, people were short. They were short. <laughs> like, they were um, just short. And, and also, like, they were not broad shouldered or broad hipped. Um, well, like and and this has nothing to do not. with weight. This is the actual skeleton, you know. The skeleton yeah. was smaller. It was it was not as wide, not as tall. Um Except back when we were like mating with Neanderthals, then yes. Yeah, Neanderthals <laughs> were still short. <laughs> the Denisonians or Denison. Uh, yeah, you also have down. to you also have to wonder because we now, yes, we now do believe that Neanderthal or Homo Neanderthalus and Homo sapien did interbreed. Um, well, we know that. We, we, we know that. We, we do DNA. know. We, we, and we the know from Denisovians, DNA. I think. Denisovians. Yeah, we, we know from DNA tracking now that they did interbreed. Um, which yes. is interesting, cross species interbreeding. So it's very, very interesting um, that. Um, but the um, um, what was, where was I going with that? But what we don't know is the social concept of it. What we don't know no. is whether it was like people mating, as in like creating a family unit, or whether it was quite literally rapey. 
Like we actually don't well, know. Well, let's, which let's be idiot. honest, Warren. Um, <laughs> I'm sure there was plenty of raping going on. That doesn't mean because there still is. That doesn't mean no, that I, all I, families I, start well, yeah, that yeah. way. But yeah. honestly, I'm sure it was going on because throughout time, I'm sure men have always lacked control. So, <laughs> mm. but, the, the, but the thing that the thing that I make bothers, light of things that I, I know. But the thing that for anthropo- is anthropologists, no, um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah anthropologists, anthropologists. Yeah. Um, is that. When they look back at this stuff, I'm going to be very careful how I say this because I... Yes. Very careful how I say this, um, is that there is almost this idea that they think that there may have been a divide between Homo Neanderthalus and Homo sapien in the way that they viewed each other in much much the same way that maybe black and white people viewed each other, let's say, 100 years ago or 200 years ago. It's possible. Um, and, and that is that there was, yes, a lot of like children born out of those couplings, put it that way, mm-hmm. but yes. there, were, there weren't family units created out of those couplings. Well, I don't um, think they found any evidence of family units between like mixed groups yet at this no, point. But, um, no. but we do know now that there's another group within that, and I, and I keep trying to get it, and I think it's yes. Denisovians. Okay, um, okay. But we also contain that DNA too. So there's some questions in general about, um, you know, our entire makeup. So I, I think we are like mutts. You know, we're like a big mishmash of all kinds of things. And so if you believe species. Giorgio Sukulos in his hair, we are also <laughs> aliens. We're also so. aliens. Yes. Does so? Okay. Does he actually believe we're part alien, or that we were just visited? Well, no, not just visited. He believes that we were genetically engineered oh, in a way. Right. And also maybe because he talks about the stuff in the Bible um, where they talk about the watchers and how they came down and mated with the daughters of men mm. and created um, the race of um, giants, I guess, technically, um, I think is what he was referring to. Um, you know, there, there's like I've said before on that show, look. First of all, I love Giorgio Sucolos' hair. You do I do. love a man with a hairstyle the, like that. Look, I, that's the thing. Like, it's it's just become the best little meme on its own. Yes. Okay, you don't even have to say anything about aliens. Just the hair. But and I've said before, the show it is utterly ridiculous a lot of times. But I can't say that there aren't some concepts that they bring to light that I can go, oh, this is gonna, okay, I could see how that could be a potential possibility. Not that I believe it. Um, sometimes they just go jump the shark, like the alien shark. Like they really just go <laughs> out there and they say shit that just makes me go, what in God's name? But the thing I do like about the show, besides making fun of David Childress's voice and his constant sunburn, um, is the fact that once in a while they'll show me some archaeological finds or discoveries on the planet that um, mainstream archaeology is not paying attention to or denies because it doesn't fit into their little box. So they just put it in a drawer somewhere and they don't talk about it. Um, they do show some stuff like that, and they do show some things that I wouldn't have known about otherwise. And when it comes to ancient civilizations, Gobekli Tepe, places like that, right. um, which because I learned from the show – I researched more about it, and I'm very interested in what's going on, um, especially at Gobekli Tepe. I'm very curious to see what comes of that. Um, I have discussed with you before my issue with the absolution of people in archaeology um, when it comes to their best guesses and guesstimations oh, the, 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 um, the when they state it as finals. fact. Yes, it drives me yeah, fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah. Don't state things as fact when they're not fact. You can say this is our best guess at this point, but don't Correct. say this is what happened and then come back to me in five years and go, you know what? We were totally wrong. This is what happened. And then come back to me two years later and go, you know what? We found another thing. Like, Because I get tired of that shit. Just say, right now, this is our best estimation of what this may be. Or... Well, I just don't speak in absolutes. It just when it's not absolute. Well, it just a, classic, a classic example of that is um, is Troy, um, not a, a person, the place. Um, they thought it was a myth. 
Well, well, that was the thing. When I was at school, I mean, I was taught that this was, you know, these were, you know, Greek tragedies. Yeah, um, you know, this was, um, you know, taken from these, uh, what, two books. Um, and um, uh, the, you know, it, it's not real. It's it, it's it's a fantasy. Right. It's a story. They're, they're right? myths so, and legends, but, yeah. But, but, but now there is some belief that those stories may have been based on other stories, Um which are based on reality. So yeah. it, it doesn't actually mean that Achilles was a real person or it, no one is trying to say that Achilles. No, but is still the city of Troy existed. But, but the fact and that the city of Troy, the yes. City, yeah, yeah. The city yeah. they thought was a myth. Yeah. They didn't even believe it existed. And then they found it. So yeah. yeah, you know, I just, I just don't like the, the statements of fact when it's still just a theory. That's the way I feel about it. I agree, and that doesn't mean the theory of gravity isn't a fact, people. There are certain things. Gravity's that we know. just a theory. Yeah. Oh, I mean look, God. I mean look, I mean and, and, I mean we could go down the, the track of I think therefore I am. There is only one thing you can prove. There's but Billy Eilish song that says but therefore I, th- I am. It's the only sorry? way I care about that. <laughs> But 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 there are certain realities of life that we do know are real, and Hugh yes, but... is not fucking real. So you know, no, 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 you know. no, no, um, no. Wait, that's not true. QAnon is real. It's a real thing now. Unfortunately, oh, the shit sorry, that they're selling, in, yes. yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I'm, they're yeah, hawking some serious crap, and yes. people are eating it up because that's just the way Americans really love things. Cheap and luckily, luckily, <sighs> luckily, luckily. In Australia, it's still it's viewed by the vast majority, except for maybe one or two percent. Who there's always going to be a one or two percent, isn't there? You know, um, it's it viewed as just here. bullshit. And if you ask ninety percent of Australians what is QAnon, they probably wouldn't be able to tell you. They've probably never heard of it. Well, I don't um, know that a lot of people here that so, believe some of the stuff actually know what it is. I, I like my sister. Oh, no, no, the, I, I don't even mean not know what it is. Never even heard the term. No, no, that's what I'm saying. My my yeah. sister, who believes that Democrats really are drinking the blood of babies, like she literally not yeah. not not my sister Eleanor. Mm. Okay, my my youngest sister. No, 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 she's smart. Yeah. But you know, Jessica, um, she really believes that Democrats are Satan worshiping, blood baby blood drinking um, pedophiles, and all of us are, is what she believes. And that also we don't care about children being abused because. We don't want to yell and scream and cry about some video of some lady on TV who says she's a doctor breaking down in tears over some crazy bullshit she's spewing. And Jessica believes because she's a doctor, it's true. You know, so even though, even though <clears throat> every she's other heard, doctor she didn't disagrees. know QAnon, she didn't know that term. Yeah, she. So, and again, she's not a smart person. Um, but you know, you think believing the QAnon things, you think you'd know the term, but they don't really. So like not everybody, not, I'm sure some of them do, but not all of them Mm. because she didn't know anything about Q. She just believed the things that they were spreading around. So, and still believes it, I would assume, but I haven't spoken to her since probably the text I sent to her. No, it's definitely the text I sent to her. Yeah, We we don't want to make too much of that public though. So, you know what I mean? Oh no, Um, no, no, that's fine. No, no, that's, I'm not drunk, okay? So no, 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 you know. no, 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 yeah. <laughs> no. It's not that I. No, I'm just saying I, I haven't yeah. spoken to her since January because, and as a lot of people know, you just can't have conversations with people who believe things like that because everything oh. about them at that point oh. is totally crazy about that, and they just want to talk about it all the time. Well, so I, you look, just end up not being able to talk to people. I, I know. I made a decision with a very close friend a couple of weeks ago, which was that. From now on, when we meet up, politics is off the table. We, we just will not talk about it. And mm. if it's raised, I will just refuse to comment. I will just have nothing to do with it. Um, that's my attitude because I don't want to end a friendship over lunacy. Do you know what I mean? I understand that. Yeah. You and know, um, but- my, father's, my father's in the same position. One of his best friends in the world is devoutly into extreme politics in this case, it's actually extreme of the left, actually not of the right. But, um, but 
there's a lot of people on extreme left who are pretty nutso as well. You know what I mean? Um, well, listen, extreme extremism it's, extreme is bad is in any word. form. It's extreme. That's exactly right. And uh, and my attitude is, as soon as I hear any of these stupid terms, I'm just shutting off. That's it. No, no, no. Yeah. All right. Well, I tried no, that. I don't want to. Yeah. That. Um, you know. When when the name when the name um, oh, no I can't even think of what their Jewish boogeyman is um, oh my god uh, you know the billionaire that they always you know what I can't think of his oh, name right now um, um, uh, you know okay anyway I think he, people he, know he tried, he, tried he, he tried to run as an independent was is that the one you're talking about in the I don't I don't know if he tried to run as an or, um, not, not no I don't I don't. I can't oh, think anyway, of it. George okay. Soros. It's George, George Soros. Soros. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So she started to say something about George Soros, and this has come up before, and I didn't want to talk about it. And I told her, I said, hey, "Can please, can we please not talk about that?" I said because I, I know that's going to lead to an argument. So I'm just going to say to you, if you insist upon talking about that or bringing that up again, um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave the room, and then you can say whatever you want to whoever stays. I said, because I'm not going to do that. And then she immediately goes, yeah, but George Soros. And I just went, okay, I'm going to go. And I started mm. to walk out of the room. We'll see. That didn't work either because then she started screeching uh, yeah. that I was just intolerant. That what the problem was is that I was intolerant. And you know what? She wasn't wrong. I am intolerant of bullshit. You're, intoler you're intolerant of anti-Semitism. <laughs> I mean, yes. You know, yes. Yeah. I'm intolerant I'm, I'm of anti-Semitism. Yes, you yeah. know, it's like, I mean, and the I'm other thing too is that I, I keep, oh, and the other thing too, <laughs> for fuck's sake, people, stop confusing being anti-Jewish to anti-Israel. You're allowed to be anti-Israel. Oh, You're not yes. allowed to be anti-Jewish. Can you just understand there is a difference? You can condemn well, yeah, the, the Israeli the state government. Of Israel the state is not if, the if Jewish wanna, people. Yeah, if you want to attack Benjamin Netanyahu, Go ahead. But that's... Don't attack fucking Judaism. It's not the same fucking thing. Well, I think the opposite, because I, I, if you say anything here at all about Jewish people, like if you say anything at all about the state of Israel, okay, yeah. not the Jewish people, if you say anything here about the state of Israel that's negative, you get jumped on as being anti-Semitic, not from Jewish really? people. But from the far right. Oh, from the far they right. Will and, tell they're, you and they're the ones who hate the Jews. That's the thing I, I don't get, right? Well, the the evangelicals love the Jews. Are you kidding? They How are waiting. Does that work? But I don't get that because they, for 2,000 years, have been screaming the Jews killed Christ and now the Jews are their best no, friend. No, 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 I don't no. get so it. So the Catholics did that, okay? Oh, is that the Jews? No oh, evangelicals okay. are doing that because they are waiting for the rapture, which they believe will come when Jesus comes back. So they have to stay in good with but the Israelis. But don't they believe that Donald Trump is the is the second coming of Christ? No, they Isn't, do not. They don't. Okay, I, I'd heard that somewhere. That well, someone. I mean, was I'm sure that, there's some extremist weirdos that might have believed that, but I would tend to think that they were also the types of people that hoarded too many guns. So and tons I'm just, of baked you know, beans like, yeah. and lived in basements and started siphoning their own urine. Yes, people maybe, like that. but I, you know, you'd say that, but I, I, I've known in like people I thought were intelligent professionals who have fallen into the whole Trump thing and the QAnon mm. thing. Like, I don't, I don't understand it. But again, just because somebody's successful doesn't mean they're intelligent or educated. Um, that's you know. On, on the upside, I sent uh, Kevin uh, Sorbo a nasty tweet during the week. Oh. He he posted a tweet sort of saying, "Oh, it's the Oscars again." Did anyone remember? And I said, and I sent him a tweet back, something along the lines of, "Well, because you're such a shit actor, you probably weren't invited." Um, did you get? Did you get um, in trouble? Did you get Twitter no, jail? No, well, no, because nobody cares I, about well, it. I, th I think that's kind of okay. You know what I mean? That's. I don't think that's actually um, kicked off Twitterable. I, I mean, I didn't threaten to well, kill him. Well, I would have thought the same didn't... thing about some of the shit. I, I said, know, but, I know, oh, you know I, what happened. You, yeah, you were so. treated very harshly. In fact, the yes. thing that pisses me off, and I don't want to go into details because you don't want to talk about it on air, but. The thing that really pissed me off about what happened to you is that what you said to her was far less than what she says to other people. I you know. were punished and she was fucking given a pat on the back. That yeah. pisses me off. Yeah, check mark. That pisses yeah. me off. 
Yeah. In other words, yeah. she's allowed to say it, but you're not. That I, I have a want, real problem yeah. with. Yeah. I just wondered if I had said, please get out of my hometown. And if I had called her bitch instead of skank, or if I had called her moron instead of a skank, if I would have still had my accounts. But you know what? I'm going to stop whining about it, even though I mm. still could barely get any followers because no matter who I try to follow, they don't follow me back. Well, they because don't. I have That's... like 85 followers. No, I think I have 116 now or 21 or something. But yeah, it's but, going up a little know, bit. But I just but... feel like I was like 6,000 followers on one account and like 700 on the I've, other. I've been so there as well. My, I, I, I've, I've, I've killed off two accounts. One, I think, got to 5,000 followers, killed it off. I got you did one. that yourself, though. Oh, no, no, no. I did it myself. And don't worry. Yes. And I did it because I had a fucking hissy fit because, um, oh, we don't want to, we don't need to go down the fact that there's somebody I believe in a certain state of the United States that should be strung up and hung. But apart from that, um, I, I, <laughs> we're all allowed to have our hissy fits. But, but yes, I even had somebody yes, say, I even had a, a friend come back to me who was a Twitter friend. They came back to me. They rejoined on my new account. They sort of said, you're a fucking dickhead. You really were. Like, all you did was prove that he won. What did you achieve? Yeah. Okay, well, you know what? You know what? That you know? person might have cared enough about you to tell you the truth then, if that was the case. Well, but, I, 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 think, I think I she did, and I think she was right, asshole. too. I think she was you know? wrong. She was wrong. Yeah. She was, she was Sometimes right I just have to admit I'm the asshole, too. So, not right now. But um, once but you in a did while, nothing, I, will I, I think you, no, you did nothing wrong. This well, certain I mean, person, this certain person we're talking about, she lives in a political world where she spends her life attacking and insulting people for a living. And the yeah, fact no. that I, 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 I just know, I, I really thought that you were hard done by. Really oh, I did too, but by. nobody cares. Like well, I wasn't I do, anybody, so but, it didn't. Well, I mean, yeah, no, I'm, I'm saying, but nobody Twitter cares. You know I can't I mean? get a human being. Doesn't matter. Um, hey, you know what I need is a break. Oh yes, yes, I think that's a good idea because yeah, let's take you know, a break. Absolutely. So we'll take a quick break, and we'll be yes. right back. <laughs> And we're back, and you heard nothing of what was just said for the last 30 minutes. Sorry about that. <laughs> it was not 30 minutes. <laughs> I don't know what it was. All right. Warren's in love uh, with Selma Hayek. We got to see... Uh, what, what else do we talk about? Um, um, uh, what the else Nevers. We, we, uh, the Nevers uh, is yes, a really good show. The Check Nevers. it out. Steampunk is really cool. Oh, that um, yeah, because I'm I'm. He asked me about steampunk stuff, which the Nevers is. That's why we talked about it. And then also, um, I have a costume I'm making for cosplay. I'm going to post a picture of it, and it is his steampunk costume in the works. So that's the so end yes. of that. There we go. <laughs> and Selma Hyatt has a nice bottom. There we go. That was yeah, oh, the sum of what talk- we talked about. We also talked about um, Catherine Zeta Jones and her bottom, and then oh yes, now enough internet for us. Yes, and <laughs> HBO and how it streams around the world. No, 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 Warren, because I sounded stupid there, and we're not going to talk about <laughs> oh, there that. We go. The well, show there we go. is now we're... over. Let's okay. <laughs> that never happened. That conversation no, never happened. It did no, not. It didn't. <laughs> oh. All right, then. All right, well, we'll probably wrap it up. So, sorry you missed the last minute. Uh, last It was probably about 10 minutes or so. Sorry about that. It was my fault. My I'm always messing something up. No. <laughs> <laughs> and all I know is that you guys didn't hear me being as stupid as you could have heard me being. So, I, you know, thanks, Warren. I appreciate what it, you, actually. What, were you what, stupid? Oh, anyway, anyway, no, anyway. Um, all right. Sure. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. All right. Here we go. All right. So, anyway. So, um, thanks for listening. We'll be back probably in a couple of weeks, something like that. Um, maybe. And um, maybe next. Yeah. Maybe next week. Yeah. Maybe next week. Maybe the week after. Depends a little bit where the schedules lie. Um, and uh, thanks for listening. Anything else? Nope. That's it. No. I'll stop the last <laughs> of my wine. Listening. Say hi to me on Twitter. Oh, my God. There it went. All right. There we go. Perfect timing. I finished the bottle. All right. Hey, so. do you know about the German Wolpertinger? Wolpertinger. No. The word, the German word Wolpertinger loosely translates to mean a curious flying creature that lives in woods, lakes, or mountains. 
Legend says these mythological creatures have saliva that can be used as an aphrodisiac. Oh. And I have a picture of it from the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. I was just going through my pictures to see if I had an, like a better picture of my steampunk thing. And I found this, and so I'm going to send it to you. It's got a little glare on it because I took it through some glass. But I find I think that you will find this to be quite amusing. And I'm going to send it to you. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it's a it's a creature. Nothing better than a creature. All right. Wait, All right then. Here it is. I send it to you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cheers, guys. Uh, we'll be back with the net show in a week. <laughs> I thought we stopped. What? Oh, there it goes. It just went. <laughs> My phone was not off. All right. Here we go. Yes, that was was by Magnum PI. Oh, I we thought, never got to we never got to talk about the the Magnum. Two weeks, two shows in a row. We we're going to talk about Magnum PI, oh and we didn't. God. Anyway, never mind. We'll have to remember for next time. Are we off now? No, we're going now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Bye. <laughs>